giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. All right. If there's any other questions about that match, we can hit them up a little bit later on. Just post them in chat, or if you have any other comments for us, you know, let us know what's going on too. But I think we're going to go on to the Carson finals here. And so let's, we're going to go back to 2015 and it's Recycle Rush. And I know people don't like Recycle Rush. I get it. You know, you think it's boring. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and for the most part, you're correct. <laughs> but here's the thing. 2015, in my opinion, was the best engineering challenge that FIRST has given out, period. And I love the creativity of design that was able to result from it. And I, you know, I think the 3v0, like, I understand that the lack of interaction between the robots after the first two seconds of the match is a bit of a downer. I, I totally get that. On the other hand, I think it's very cool for teams to be able to see what they've engineered out, out on the field and not have to worry about defense. I mm -hmm. think that designing just to complete tasks is very, very cool. And I think there's something fulfilling about that. So I, I like the game from that perspective. From the per spectator point of view, I get it. It was a bit dry at times, but I do think, especially at lower levels of play, but at higher levels of play, when like seven stacks were rolling out, it was it it was fun to say. So I I just I, the game has to be underrated because everyone hates it. You know, <laughs> like there, there's it couldn't be overrated. Trust me, because I think I'm the only defender of this game. But I I will get on board with the design challenge argument because oh, you, yeah. you know there was the teams like like 148's robot that year is like nothing that FRC had ever seen or will see in any foreseeable future. You know, there's those other ones that you can remember. That just there was so many different rules. I will I will concede the robot design element, but just as a game, yeah. I just was well, not. and also like yeah, on the robot design side, teams were able to get a little bit funky with their designs because you're not worried about defense. Like on eleven fourteen that year, we did a kiwi drive. We would never do a kiwi drive <laughs> in a conventional game, but that game, you know, suddenly all the metrics that that we choose use to de decide our drive train. Well, we had to throw out so many pre built assumptions about you know traction and such, and we're like, wait a second. Oh, no, make makes sense here. Let's do this. So it was cool. It, it was a weird game, though. So let's talk. Uh, someone in the chat's asking what a Kiwi drive is. It's a three wheel holonomic drive. Um, probably Did somebody else ask you about the noodle agreement. We're not going to talk about the noodle agreement. Well, we can get to all this stuff later. There was a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> um, but strategically, I, I mean, the real reason things were weird was specifically what we talked about. There was no defense involved. So most matches were really three versus none. In the finals, things were converted to actually being a head to head match. But the interaction was basically the first two seconds of pretty much every match because that's how quickly the can grabbers were going. Some were even faster. Um, like I think like one, some teams were down to like one second or just under one second. So at the very highest levels of matches, um, the winner of the match was the team that grabbed most of the cans. There were seven. There was um, ten cans in play, and so if you ended up with and three were three were assigned to each alliance, and four were spread across the center of the field. If your alliance got at least three of those four cans, you were probably going to win. Just the other alliance was functionally limited in how many points they could score. So that's why those cans were still so important. All that being said, though, you still had to execute and do something with those cans. And strategically, there's a lot to be learned by watching how teams utilize their time and interact with each other during these matches. So like, it's not like a write-off from a strategy's perspective. So the division that we're going to talk about is the um, Carson division that year. And this match, this division was rocked by the biggest upset of um, championship, maybe the biggest upset in first history with uh, 254 and 973 and their partner um, losing in the quarterfinals. And it was, I don't even want to dive into that. That could be a whole other show of analysis, but they got knocked out early and the rest of the division opened up. So when we get to the finals, we got Alliance 2 in blue, Alliance 5 in red. Alliance number two was the captain was team 1325. Um, they had two finalists that season in Ontario, but like, let's throw an asterisk on this because their finalists that year was, uh, one of them was in Waterloo where they lost to 1114 in 2056 at the peak of their powers. Um, where it was just like, yeah, no one was beating that. <laughs> and uh, sorry, that was at Windsor. And then they also lost the 2056 at the Greater Toronto Regional East. So they ran into some powerhouses early. 33-39, this is before it, this is team um, 
Bumblebee from Israel. This is before Israel went to district, so they only went to Israel's one event, and they won it. And then their third robot, 1711, winners of the Traverse City District and, oh, by the way, the Michigan State Championship. So 1711, clearly legit. We move on to the Blue Alliance. We have Team 4488, Shockwave from the PNW region. And this was um, Shockwave at the top of their game. They won two districts that year, and they were finalists at the PNW Championships. Team 67, the hot team, trying to get back to Einstein for like the eighth millionth time. Uh, they won two districts that year, no surprise. And then, believe this, as the third robot, Team 225, who won two districts and Mara Champs. So this match is, even with 254 and 973 going out early, this alliance is, these alliances are stacked. Like, think about it. Both third robots on these alliances won their respective district championships. So um, coming into the finals, Alliance 5 was in first place uh, after the quarters and the semis by a good margin. Uh, 44, 88, and 67 were just rolling together, and they just looked super, super powerful, you know, putting up six stacks. It was... Um, really really impressive so let's get ready to dive into this match as i just bring my screen up here and so we're going to start right now in autonomous mode we're going to pause it after just a couple seconds and for those of you who weren't around in 2015 like this is the match right here and seriously keep your eyes open don't blink <laughs> boom pause, let's pause it right here that there we go like <laughs> most matches are decided at this point like there were a lot of matches where after this happened, you could just say, okay, I'm going to go get some popcorn right now and I'll be back for the next match. You know, call me after field reset, reassembles like the 80 totes on the field. So 1711 grabs two cans right away. They've got them in their grasp. But Bumbleb grabs one can, but one can is totally missed. Neither Bumbleb, uh, I always call them Bumbleb, Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I was just gonna... <laughs> I was just going to let it go. <laughs> uh, so Bumblebee leaves one can up there. Shockwave has grabbed one can. So now the can war is actually going to extend into Teleops. Sorry, this Bumbleb thing. Oh, on 11-14, we always call them Bumbleb. It's just become like this thing. But we, we, know, we, we know Bumblebee. We love you. We love you. These really honeybees. It's all good. But now, if basically the Blue Alliance can get this one can off the step, They've got this match on lockdown. However, if the Red Alliance gets it, then the cans are even, and we've got a real match up here. So let's resume to see how things go. And right away, both these robots, so Autonomous is just sitting around for the rest of Autonomous. Because let's, pa let's pause here for a second again to talk <laughs> about this game. There were totes you could stack in Autonomous mode for bonus points, but a lot of alliances found that those ta stacks, those totes just got in the way, and you were allowed to take them off the field. And they were yellow totes. There's no yellow totes on the field. Both alliances got them. So all teams, after two seconds of autonomous, just sat around. This is a division final at championship. <laughs> and we have six teams just, like, hanging out by their joysticks. So that's hilarious to me. So <laughs> let's just all, you know, twiddle our thumbs here for seven more seconds. We'll just, you know, everybody has a great time. And get ready for uh, Bumblebee and Shockwave to race back for that one can. And let's pause again here to talk about this. Remember, all teams designed their can grappers to be optimized for that quick pitch at the first second of the match. Mm -hmm. Very few teams were optimized at getting a can off the stack once the match starts. So now this is like teams like improvising with devices that are kind of stuck out and just trying to like find a way to grab these cans. It's like they're like it's like blind men fishing. Like Daredevil's yeah. going fishing here and just like oof. So let's see what happens. And they're just like mashing away <laughs> who can get to this can. They got to try Bumbleb to clear out those land few, landfill toes. Yeah, Bumblebee's like hacking away, <laughs> like hoping they can grab it. And 225, and there we go. Let's pause right now. Bumblebee's got the can. And right, Blue has, has a major, major advantage. It's interesting because Shockwave backed off and they went to go stack. They sent 225 to get in position there. I wonder if they would have been better suited leaving Shockwave, but I don't remember if Shockwave's can grabber was optimized even the slightest way to um, grab that. And 225, apparently their can grabber had actually fallen off at this point. So they were probably going to struggle to get that can. And this is, you know, advantage blue right here. But again, 
now remember what I said that the Red Alliance was it had a big advantage um, coming into this matchup because they'd been stacking more smoothly. So let's watch the Red Alliance and see what they do as things go on. Because you can see the Shockwave and Hot both are halfway through stacks already. I'm just gonna say it the way I feel it. And we're just gonna let this go for the next little while. And you see these stacks building. Shockwave getting ready to drop one here. And let's pause at about the 100 second mark. Just to do a status check of where we're at right here. So Shockwave places their first st stack. And 67 is close behind. While the blue side, not much scoring has gone on, has gone on yet. So red's beginning to take a little bit of an advantage here. But remember, red's only got four cans to work with. They've got to use them efficiently. So let's go for another about 20 seconds here. Shockwave goes off to grab another can and then set up at the portal um, to grab stacks. 225 is doing a really good job of just moving some landfill totes on onto the platforms there. Hot getting ready to deliver their first stack. We're seeing some nice work by 1711 delivering cans over to Bumblebee. And now we're paused right here. And so taking a look at doing a reset right now, Hot's got their stack. So the blue, the red alliance has two full stacks, meaning, and two of their cans are up already. So like they're maximizing what they can do. This is really efficient stuff. It looks like blue's really far behind here because Bumblebee hasn't put up a stack yet. And it looks like 1325 just kind of have a, has a mess of totes. But that mess is not a mess. 1325 was like one of those, um, the, the match for them was a marathon. They came out very controlled, but by the end of the match, they always got their three stacks. But they didn't do it the conventional way, building stacks one at a time. They would take three totes, put them on the platform. They would take another three totes, put them on the platform. They would take another three totes, put them on the platform. So they have three stacks of three. And it looked so weird. But then they would take three more totes with a can on it and place it on top of those three to build the complete six stack, which was the gold that you needed. The six stack with a can was the masterpiece that you were going for. And they'd do that again. So they would do six separate movements through the match, and it would be spread out through the duration of the match. So it would always look like they were behind, but then, you know, without fail, they would get their three stacks in there. So. Um, most people in the audience who were watching this probably would have thought that Red was far ahead, but anyone who had seen a lot of 1325 that year um, and the paradox of inverse paradox, you would realize, hey, they're up to something here. So this is still pretty cool. Um, it's also important to notice that, yes, Blue has six cans here, but the way the stacks are going up, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to use them all efficiently. And that might mean that the value of their cans decreases because cans, the scoring for cans wasn't linear. It was based on the height of the stack you had built. So that's something to think about. But also remember, even if they only score five of their cans in an optimal arrangement on six stacks, they still should have this because the Blue Alliance only has four cans. So let's keep going here and we'll go for, uh, let's stop at the 67 mark for Team 67. <laughs> You see um, Bumblebee getting ready to drop off a six stack. And Shockwave's got another one ready, and we're going to pause and do a reset here. So, again, 1325 is still just has three lonely toad stacks. Like, that, 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 what was that? That was just 18 points. That's nothing right now. But there's a bigger game in progress. Um, Bumblebee doing a great job there, while Hot and Shockwave are just moving really smoothly through all of this. And uh, they've got two optimal stacks already. They have a third optimal stack coming, and there's only one can left over there. So who's going to take that right now? So let's keep going here. And I guess I can see why people think this game is boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's just like a, there's a lot of waiting. There's a lot of nervousness right here. But I love the way that 1711 is uprighting cans and just getting them set up for their partners. That's their contribution here, and it is super super valuable. So watching that over on the blue side of the field. Let's pause right here as things are coming along and we noticed that 1325 is now starting to complete their stacks they've already got one of their up top shockwave's done their two hots finishing one up now shockwave is going to get that last can that's interesting that the they didn't split the cans two two between shockwave and hot that they, they trusted shockwave with three um works out but that was just an interesting game. So Hot now basically is just going to do uncapped stacks, which some teams could do really quickly, while other teams struggled with doing uncapped stacks because they needed the can to help position everything tightly. For example, 11-14 uncapped stacks were a mess. So this is kind of interesting how it plays out. But right now, like Red's really got control of this. Blue's still got 
three cans just hanging out. So they've got to find a way to use them. And let's let this go for about another 30 seconds here. Okay, we're going to stop at the 20 second mark. And I can see what, from having what I saw hot regular season, I can see why they would trust 4048 with this can apparently because uh, hot did have some can security issues throughout the regular season. I don't remember them at champs. That makes a lot of sense. And and 4888 was really, really good. So you see 1325 now lifting another three, three plus up there. And they've got their business almost taken care of. Um, 225 still doing their thing, just getting every extra tote that they can get over there for two points. I'm not going to talk about noodles. Noodles are so stupid. <laughs> um, and you see Shockwave. Yeah. And so now we got 20 seconds left. Shockwave's got their tote, tote stack ready, ready to go. And they're ready to drop it off. Blue is behind and they need something to happen because basically they've got to get two more cans up somewhere. But, and we know 1325 is going to handle one, but they have no other stacks to put this lonely can on. And there's only 20 seconds left. And that's like a lot. And so it's like, what's going to happen here? And so let's let it go with right now. 1711 has a can in their hands. What are they going to do with it? Because they aren't the ones who are stacking. So let's let it go for just two more seconds here and watch this handoff to Bumblebee and pause right here. Like, this is stuff that doesn't happen in most first game. The transfer of game pieces between um, Alliance partners. But this is crucial because now maybe Bumblebee can put that somewhere and maybe 1711 can set up a can, for, a tote for them to put that can on. Because the can not on a tote is worth nothing. Zero points. Mm-hmm. And Blue's really got to do some, got to come up with some action here. And now let's let it go till about the 10 second mark because then this match just gets crazy. As we're watching, the shockwave goes to get their final stack up on the platform. And let's pause it right here. Perfect place to pause it. Eight seconds left. The Red Alliance is done now. They've got all their cans up. They've got all the totes that they're going to do. I think they've exhausted the human player station. So basically, the only pe- team that can really kind of get to totes is 225 because shockwave's not going to want to navigate all these stacks in fear of knocking them down. Hot seems content to stay in the corner. But Reds, with being done right now, there's, they've got four complete stacks up, and Blue only has three complete stacks. Uh, or Blue, I guess Blue's got four complete stacks too, but um, let's back up here. I'm slowing down here. Reds got four complete stacks and a lot of totes on their platform because Hot built that extra stack and 225's got some. So that's why Red has the advantage compared to Blue's four complete stacks. However, 1325 still got a can, and Bumblebee still got a can. And let's watch both those robots in the last eight seconds. 1325 completes their stack. Bumblebee's looking for somewhere to go with that can. 1711 drops a tote on. They drop it right on with time running out. And that is how the Carson division was won. That last can being dropped on that tote with one second left swings the match. That was the difference. And it was just a, such a cool move by 1711 and Bumblebee to choreograph that together in a game where teams were really pretty much working independently for that to come together just like that and to have the awareness that they needed to do something together to make that call in the box with that little time left is absolutely crazy. And Because that goes back to that first maneuver between the two of them you pointed out. Like the fact that 1711 had the can, they hand it to Bumblebee and it was a – then 17 – like, you know, it, that's – that was a whole big like maneuver between the two of them. Just that amount of teamwork. You don't see that often. Right. And if, if those teams worked independently, yeah, the blue Alliance would not have won yeah. because Bumblebee wasn't going to be able to get it, get totes out for a stack. And the uncap, if um, 1711 was doing uncap stacks, it just, it wouldn't have been enough points. And so that's how this all came together like that. And it was absolutely, um, this, this was a special match. And, I had kind of forgotten about this because there was so much going on at Champs this year. Because that was the last year of, um, I guess it was the second last year of eight divisions at Champs. Mm-hmm. And it was just like very overwhelming and there was a lot uh, going on. So that was um, pretty cool. So let's take a look to see if we got any questions here. Ooh, we do. I've heard 4488 was crazy 2015. What was it? Um, so 
for, they had a great stacking machine, but they also had like these weird can grabbers that no, they never deployed. They were like top secret, but apparently they found some loophole that your can grabbers could extend outside of the field and actually start in a can or something. PJ, well, can you talk about this? It, was, it wasn't outside the field. It was okay. if you had something that went basically along the top of the rail because that wasn't considered – because you couldn't start in your landfill or in your uh, – Something else, whatever you couldn't, but whatever it was, you couldn't start. But the side rail of the field was not included in that. So some teams figured that out. That theoretically, you could have had something go along the side rail and then like cut back over type deal. I don't remember exactly how it was gonna. She's but like, you couldn't go outside the field, but the guardrail, like on top of the guardrail, was this weird neutral gray area well, that wasn't I'll, included. I'll, I'll never forget going on to Einstein that year in in the prep time before Einstein. Someone from forty eight. 4488 comes to me and they're telling me about this can grabber. And I'm like, why are you telling me about this? Like, I, I've got other things to do. <laughs> and then he's like, so, so do you want them? I'm like, what? He's like, well, we got knocked out. We want to see them used on Einstein. So we'll just give them to you. And I was like, well, that's, that's weird. That's sketchy. He's like, no, trust me. Lots of teams are doing it. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, there's like an, like an auction going on in the pits. And teams were literally taking can grabbers off robots that had been eliminated, handing them to other teams. I'm like, this is so weird. Is this, <laughs> like, what is happening? He's like, yeah, lots of people are setting up can grabbers to stop you in 148. So we wanted to help you guys out. I'm like, this is bizarre. I'm like, we got our own weird can grabbers over there. I'm gonna... <laughs> we've got we've got an entire harpoon system <laughs> being set up. So, you know, <laughs> our can grabbers could literally kill people. The, the, ours were not that dangerous. <laughs> I'm I'm serious. We did the energy calculations. We had them for the inspectors that proved that other teams can grabbers, like for example, um, uh, the um, 3310s can grabbers could do delivered much more energy and 3310s can grabbers hit a ref once <laughs> you know ours were like nicely aimed we had a nickname for them they were called the frogs and lily pads just very gentle yeah. <laughs> very nice harpoons there we go spectrum 11 14 were way safer than 118 1678 and 33 10s totally totally <laughs> Uh, 1711 us was cheesecake at states because of the ability to pick up cans 1023 gave us can grabbers took them away and we rebuilt them for worlds so oh 1711 was using 1023 can grabbers That's actually awesome. i was almost positive they were 548s but i guess somebody from 1711 would know better than i would uh, yeah well 1023 did have really really good can grabbers that year so it uh, uh, does not surprise me mm -hmm. uh going back to your match pj in 2018 how would you compare the Turing number eight alliance and the darwin number six alliance 1533 1296 2655 3593 versus 494 865 mm -hmm. 49 17 and 51 that's a really good question. I'll go first. I have some thoughts. <laughs> yeah, um, go ahead. I, the, the number six Darwin alliance was stacked. 49-17 mm -hmm. should not have been a second pick at championship. They, I mean, I wouldn't say it was bad scouting because they just had a lot of mechanical breakdowns throughout the weekend. But this was like a team who was arguably a top five team in the province of Ontario. Uh, they were division... Provincial championship finalists to uh, 2056 and 1325. So, like them being available in the second round to 494 and 865, just made for a super super powerhouse alliance. So, on the other hand, 1533, 1296, and 2655 had such great synergy and played really well strategically together. I think that'd be an interesting matchup. But there was just like 4917 was just way too good to be a second round robot. Yeah, it's it's hard because they play different they play different strats, so you can't do a a true comparison because 494 was a scale bot that played defense as opposed to 2655, who was the pure switch bot. So 494 had the ability to switch back and play scale, and so they did a little bit more sort of bouncing back and forth than the Turing Alliance had the ability to because 2655 couldn't reach the scale. Um so in a head to head, I don't know who I take. Let me put it that way. Yeah, um, I, I think I, I would lean towards um, the Michigan Ontario Alliance, but mm -hmm. that, I'm clearly biased. So. I mean, same. Like I was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but right, right. It's basically, the PJ Karthik Alliance, right there. <laughs> exactly. And I did, and I I know 494s. I know a lot of their strat, and I know a lot of their strategy people, and I think they would have found the way to get around what 2655 and all of them were doing. So I think, I think I take Turing in a three-game series, but I'm pretty sure like they're not winning it in two straight. Let me put it that way. Yeah, it would be a good matchup. 
Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.